Hello, Hateless Gaming here, bringing you another burner guide. This time, we've got the long-awaited Garista base. Uh, this is the burner that I have avoided doing for so long because it's an extremely difficult one, and I've, with the help of a good friend by the name of Feldora, we've managed to put together a fit that does it reliably, safely, and semi-effectively. I'm not going to say it's the most effective way of doing it, because there's a few things you can do to this fit that cost a lot of is to make it more effective. But at the same time, I don't feel like they're worth the cost. That's coming from the guy that likes to min-max everything. Uh, it's using Abyss mods. I'll get into that in just a minute here. But we got the Grista base. This is the super carrier one where you have to take on six waves of fighters. You do a regular fighter wave, a bomber fighter wave, and then it repeats this cycle three more times. So you basically have to do this, the, the, the same two fights three times in a row. Which is just time consuming. It, it just takes a long time to do it. And that's the problem I have with this mission. That's why I don't run it. And I haven't really had interest in running it before. But in the for the sake of completing every single burner, we're doing this one. And I got the guide for you today. I put everything together. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to go over the fitting. Uh, I'm going to open up the fitting window here. Uh, we have a Phantasm. These things are fantastic. They have for their, their ship bonus open this up for the ship bonus they get an afterburner velocity bonus so once you have called the cruiser train to five they get a 100 percent bonus and a tracking bonus along with a medium turret damage bonus as well so they do good damage they have insane tracking and they're really fast with an afterburner they go almost micro warp drive speed with an afterburner which is awesome and then they also have the awesome tracking so they're that's why we picked it and it's also got a really good slot layout if we can do bring the e-war that we want and the tank we want and the capacitor that we need so we've managed to make it cap stable uh we're running some heavy pulse lasers with imperial navy multi-frequency you don't want to use t2 ammo because of the tracking penalty the tracking penalty is too much and that sucks so you you really want the the tracking of the multi-frequency in the mid slots, we'll start with a Republic Fleet Cap Battery. We've got a Pythum X-Type Large Shield Booster, a Stasis Web of Fire, a uh, Prop Mod. Uh, it can be a Dead Space or a Navy, but you definitely want one that has a higher uh, velocity bonus so that you can move faster. Because every bit of movement speed that we can get out of this ship is going to help us, and you'll see why here in a minute. We have a Federation Navy Webifier to help tackle down some of the further out ones. I'll show you guys here in a minute why we need the Fed Navy one. It's very similar to the fit with the Sanchez Succubus. You'll, you'll see it. it. It's really simple. And we have a Pythum C-type adaptive invuln, a capacitor flux coil to help with capacitor. So these two together, along with our rigs, give us more capacitor. Uh, damage control, just in case we take armor damage and to help a little bit with the shield tank. An overdrive injection system, like I said, our our movement is incredibly important in this mission. And how we move is incredibly important too. And we have two heat sinks. You can faction the heat sinks for a little bit more DPS, which does end up helping. A anti-EM screen enforcer, because we do need a omni tank. And a two medium capacitor control circuits again to help with our capacitor. And then we have drones in the drone bay in case we need to throw something away to try and bug SRAM if we're about to die, we'll throw our drones. And that has a chance to save us, but this is a pretty safe fit. It shouldn't almost never happen, but we carry drones to carry drones, basically. Uh, for skills, I would really recommend that both the spaceship commands for a MAR, uh, a MAR cruiser and Mimitar cruiser are to five, and that you have your spaceship command skill to help as well. In navigation, you're going to need, obviously not these skills, but you're going to need navigation to five to help with movement. Afterburner five helps with capacitor. And then there's another one that, uh, fuel conservation also, is it fuel conservation, uh, improve afterburner. This helps with capacitor need. And then I feel like there is another one. Evasive maneuvering helps with agility, afterburner, helps with capacitor, navigation is important, and I believe acceleration control gives more bonus to the acceleration control, or, or to uh, not acceleration, but more velocity bonus, you get more speed. So you're gonna need those skills trained. In the engineering tab, we're gonna want our, let's see how tight is this fitting. Uh, it's not that tight of a fitting, so advanced weapon upgrades four and decent engineering skills should be fine. 
Uh, you do want your capacitor skills to five, the capacitor management and capacitor systems operations. Uh, in armor, we don't really need anything because we're a shield tank. In shields, shield compensation helps reduce capacitor need. If you, you're fine without it, you don't need it. Shield operation, I believe, is the one that helps recharge time. The shield management gives you a 5% capacitor, which gives you a bigger buffer to play with, which helps. And then I believe shield upgrades is required to use the... You need a chain of one, which I believe everybody has. Uh, targeting is not needed. Uh, it does help to get uh, long-range targeting and signature analysis as you lock things faster. Uh, gunnery is a big one that a lot not everybody will have. Uh, I wish you could s switch support skills, but you're going to want all your support skills to 4 or 5. Every one that you train to 5 from 4 to 5 is going to help you significantly and reduce the time because the tracking damage and everything is extremely important in this one. Uh, we're not using missiles, we don't need those. Drone skills aren't needed. Uh, we're using web of fire, uh, so our proportion jamming to 3 I think is all you need, or to 4 because we're using the T2 web. Uh, we don't need any scanning skills. Uh, rigging skills don't really help us here. And, uh, of course, social skills for mission running. But that's a, another video. Anyways, those are the skills you need. We went over the fit. Now it's the moment you guys have been waiting like a year for because I finally got the grocer burner. We're going to use the phantasm. So we're going to go right on in. First thing we're going to do, ideally, is drop a mobile depot or a mobile tractor unit. I forgot to bring one this time. Uh, we're going to immediately turn on our tank because we are cap stable, so we don't want to have to worry about that. We're going to land on grid. Those things are going to immediately attack us. Our afterburner turns on immediately. We're going to lock these three up and then turn on our afterburner. And then we are going to keep at range 7,500 because that is where our optimal range is. You, If your optimal range is different, you want to point it at that range. So we're going to immediately keep at range to one of them. You're going to double web him once you get the ability. They'll come close enough that you can double web. You're going to start firing. You're going to figure out which one you're shooting. And you're going to put the tactical overlay on. And that'll give you a little arrow in the direction with the tactical overlay. It should give you an arrow of which direction he's flying in. You want to match his direction so you can apply your DPS. We're trying to get his transversal velocity down as low as we can. And so he's kind of flying down a little bit, so we want to point our ship in the downward direction in a little bit. This is why the speed is so critical. Every little bit of speed that we have helps us apply more damage here. And the sooner we can kill this first one, the sooner we get control of the mission. You see how this arrow is kind of pointing down? We're not flying quite in the right direction. And the better we do this, the quicker this thing dies, and the better off we're going to be. So we're just going to slowly chip him down. If you need to, you can always overheat your, your repper to get additional reps. It is almost down. Uh, first one's down, so we're going to keep at range on the second one, and then we're just going to web and fire. And then the others will just go down very quickly. So we, we repeat this for the other two. Uh, we don't have to do the... Uh, once, once we get this far, once we kill the first one, keeping at range will give us... Uh, control and we'll actually be able to do full damage because the transversal will drop. We actually have range control, so we are we have more E war than them. We have control of range, so the transversal goes down to zero, and the others will just die really quickly. So there goes the second dragonfly, and then we're gonna keep at range on the third dragonfly. Web them down and start firing. And we're gonna kind of look towards that uh, antero here. And as soon as that dragonfly dies, we want to get close to that Intero. We want to start burning straight towards it. What's going to happen is three fighter bombers are going to spawn. And if we're sitting stationary when those fighter bombers hit us initially, we're going to be in a world of hurt. They do a crap ton of alpha damage, and our survival method with them is signature tanking. So we, we got to be ready for that. As soon as that thing goes down... I'm going to turn towards the Antaro and start flying. So they do scram you, or they, they disrupt you. So we're getting our ship velocity up. We're going to lock up these three. And we're going to pick one. It, it doesn't matter which. But we are going to pick one. 
We're going to keep at range 7,500. 7, We're going to overheat the Federation Navy Webifier, which you, you want to remember which one's the Fed Navy Web. And then we're going to web him and keep at range. And we're going to run that overheat on the web of fire until we can turn on the second web of fire. And we can turn off the overheat on the web of fire now. Once he's webbed, you got him and you just slowly start killing him. Uh, for the first one, you only want one web of fire on because you want him to move fast. So he goes 360 meters a second with one web. And that keeps you moving when you're keeping at range. You're not going to sit still, so you're not going to get wrecked by the by them when you're doing this. Because if you web both of them, or if you use both webs on these guys, uh, what'll happen is you'll stop moving, or you'll move slow enough that they really, really hurt. It's important that we keep our velocity up. So you see our, our velocity is bouncing all over the place, and as we move faster, we take a lot less damage. Once the uh, first one is dead, we're pretty safe. So we're going to keep at range on the next one. We're going to repeat the same thing where we overheat the web of fire. Once he gets under 14, we'll turn off the heat on our web. Uh, we do fly faster than them without the web of fire, but this is necessary to keep con uh, range control. Even though we fly faster, uh, you close the gap a lot faster when you use the web of fire. So that's why we do that. It, it reduces the time to do it. You can keep at range without using the webs on these guys. You can even drop the Federation Navy web and do two T2 webs uh, and just keep at range on these guys and you'll slowly close the gap and you'll be just fine. Uh, you'll also be moving a lot faster so it'll take a lot less damage. But those, those bomb waves hurt. They hurt really bad. So you wanna make sure you're moving when they hit you. We're going to immediately keep at range on the third one. We'll overheat our web of fire again. Web him. Once we're under, once we are under 14 kilometers, we'll turn off the heat, which should be after this cycle, and we'll start firing. This one you can double web. It doesn't really matter because we're not taking damage from the other two anymore. Uh, and then we're going to kind of repeat the same thing. Uh, if you had a mobile tractor deployed, which I really recommend you do. Uh, you would go towards the mobile depot between the waves. But I haven't seen any good loot. I don't know if these drop good loot because I haven't ran it enough. I'll figure out and I'll update you guys in the comments. Or if you guys find loot in the comments, tell me how many times you've ran the mission and how often you've gotten loot. So that way I can learn how likely you are to get loot. We're going to burn towards the Antero again. This is the second set. So we, we, we do have to count. This will be set number two. Remember, we're just going to double web one, start firing at it, figure out which one we're double webbing, and then get flying in the same direction as him. We want to be flying parallel. So we want to line ourselves up to his little arrow here. There we are, and then fly this way. Because we want to fly exactly parallel to him, and that will give us the best tracking. See, we just did 843 damage, 231. That, that wasn't a good shot. Our... Uh, we seem to be doing pretty good. This is all right. Uh, you can use overheat on the afterburner if you'd like. It's a little bit more consistent to keep out range on him and overheat, but it uses overheat, which I'm not comfortable doing on this mission because it's a long mission. You don't want to heat too much. So as you can see, our, our mid rack has cooled down. We'll be fine for overheating in the next wave and we didn't have to heat here. So that dragonfly is going to go down anytime now takes a moment you know usual NPC killy things that dragonfly is now down not quite almost got him there he goes and then we'll keep at range this guy do the same thing where we double web him uh, the 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 quicker you kill that first dragonfly the better off you are if you take too long to kill them, you will bleed through shields. In order uh, to rectify that, you just use a little overheat. Uh, use it sparingly. Don't overheat too much because you have, if, especially if you're on the first wave and you make a mistake, you, you have the entire fight left where you are, there's a chance you're in danger. So you, you really want to use the overheat as little as, you, as little as possible to make it so that you don't die from overheating a module too much and then not being able to complete the mission. So we're rinsing and repeating here. Uh, we are really close to the Antero this time at the end of this wave. So when the fighter bombers spawn, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fly straight towards the Antero 
and get ready to take that that damage. So one more good shot, the next three will spawn. Basically make sure you're moving. If you're not moving at this point, you will be in trouble. So we're gonna keep at range this guy. We're gonna overheat the Fed Navy Stasis Web of Fire. We'll grab him. Once he's under 14, we turn off the overheat and we start firing. We kinda wanna make sure that we don't bump into a structure. It looks like we're going to though. We're just gonna kinda deal with it. As long as we continue moving, we'll be all right. So just kind of going to slowly go down. I, I Like I said, it, it just takes time. It's it, it's not a hard mission. It's just a time-consuming mission. And that being so, as long as you make sure you're moving and as long as you make sure your reps and everything are on, you're, you'll be fine in this mission. Uh, we are going to keep out range this one now. Overheat our web of fire. Grab it. Once we get under 14, we will begin shooting him again. Or we'll start shooting him right away. But once he's under 14... We want to turn off the heat on the web so that we don't overheat too much, because we still have to do um, we still have to do two more waves after this wave. We're not quite done, so as I said, heat use sparingly so that you don't burn things out. This guy's gonna go down nice and easy, and the next one's gonna be this one here. I appear to be lagging a bit. Uh, things are changing. His direction keeps changing. I don't know why. Keep at range this one now. Repeat the same thing where we overheat this. Keep range. We can turn off the heat now and begin firing. And then it goes down nice and slowly. So now we're preparing for the third wave. We're going to get one more, or the third pair of waves, I should say. So. We have two more waves after this one. As you can see, I'm counting. This is the fourth wave. We got five and six left. So as soon as that dies, it's 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 not as important to be moving when the fighters spawn, but it's really important to be moving when the bombers spawn. The bombers are every other wave. They're the uh, second, fourth, and sixth waves. The fighters will deal damage to you even if you are moving. We are going to web that guy down. It's like we're on that one. We're going to kind of line up our trajectory with his. Start firing here. And just remember, if you need to, overheating is A-OK. -okay. Don't feel bad if you have to overheat to survive. And just kind of make sure that your alignment is about the same as his, which will lower your transversal with him and give you the ability to actually kill him. If you don't align with him well, uh, you'll see kind of what's happening here, is uh, we are not in control. And he's going this way a little bit. He seems to be changing his direction. It takes a little bit longer to kill him if you don't line up correctly. There we go. Now, now we're doing about three times the damage. We are bleeding a little bit of shield, so I'll put a little heat into our shield wrapper. Not too much though, because we still have to overheat our web of fire and they're on the same rack. So it does cause heat on that rack that you need for the web of fire. But generally, once you kill the first one, he's not moving fast, so it's kind of hard to align in the same direction he is. We're going to go about there. Turn off the heat there, and we'll let our shields bleed a little bit. Just going to kind of try and fly parallel. The other option that you can do uh, to make this a little bit easier is if you do a keep at range style. Now we're flying up with him. Um, you can do a keep out range style with them, and if you do a uh, mutated web of fire with a 63% and a mutated afterburner that has a higher percentage, you can actually control range on this spawn. Uh, he's going straight up, that's not good. Kind of struggling here on this guy. That's, that's alright if you struggle, you just kind of 
keep on trying to control. I just got to get the right transversal here. I don't know where the leg's coming from, but there's leg and it's not telling me the right direction. So he keeps on changing direction. It's getting kind of infuriating. I'm going to overheat my hardener a little bit. I'll reduce the damage taken. It should lead to me. So now he's flying up. What is going on here? Why is he flying in different directions? He's doing damage again. He's flying this way now. What is going on? Look at He is going in different directions. We're going to overheat a little bit and maybe if we got a little further away from him. I'm going to fly directly away from him now. I'm now rolling full heat, which I don't like to do. Turn off the heat now. Kind of spare the, spread that out. We got a little bit further away. I don't know why he's changing direction so much. He's not kind of line up with him and try and point in the same direction that he is. He keeps on changing direction. This is not okay. Why does he keep on changing his direction? This is wild. We lost one of the webs. That's what's going on. We only have one web on him. I'm trying to control his range or control him and he's I got one web, so maybe he'll be a little more consistent now. We just want to fly in the same direction that he's flying. I did this like five times on the test server and I didn't have this problem. Yep, there we go. Now he's going down. So you saw we, we, we had a problem. We conquered it and we're fine. But if you... um. If you get a higher web percentage web and a better afterburner, uh, you can actually just keep out range on him and it'll be fine. I'll overheat a little bit more just to play it safe while that guy slowly dies. Why are we missing now? Did he change direction again? He did. Fly directly up. Try and match his direction to keep the transversal down. I'm going to overheat the guns now. Still have a lot of heat left. This is really, really bizarre that this took this long to do. It's because I forgot to do the, the second web there. We're going to turn off the overheat now. He changed direction again. He he did indeed change direction. He's changing direction. He's going straight down now. I don't know why he keeps changing direction. Now he's going this way. What is happening? Keeps on changing direction. And turn off that heat. Okay, I'm just going to start keeping at range and we're going to overheat this. That's what we're going to do. This last little trick up our sleeve, and this is actually working really well. So that's 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 the last trick that we have is that we can overheat our afterburner a little bit. But now we're we've got a lot of heat spreading around. We go a little in the hole, but we'll be fine as soon as we kill this guy. Turn off that heat. Turn off that heat now. We don't want to burn out our afterburner. He's going down. Now we'll keep at range the third one. Grab these. Now we're safe. Okay, so that was a little bit of a headache, so to speak. Uh, I don't know what caused him to orbit or keep on changing directions, but if all else fails, you can overheat your afterburner a little bit and uh, pull a little range control. Second one is down. We're going to go ahead and do the third. 
double web them, fire at them. And then we have the last wave coming up here, which hopefully we don't have another problem. But that was a little, that's what happens when you do things live. They, uh, they go weird. Gonna go down, and then uh, we have a wave of bombers spawning next. So we want to make sure that we are moving once the bombers spawn. Gonna lock them up. They're gonna hit us. Uh, we can unlock the Antero. We don't want to have the the, the the super cap locked up. Uh, we are going to keep at range one of these guys. Overheat our web a little bit. Grab them. Fire. Turn off the overheat once they're at the right spot. And we are golden. Got him in range. He'll start taking damage in a moment. I think he's stuck on that. Yeah, that's the one we're shooting the one that's stuck. So that might end up having some interesting things happen because he's stuck. If he gets off that, we'll probably be fine. But if he doesn't, uh, looks like he got off of it. Looks like we're going to get stuck on it now, possibly. As long as we continue our damage application and continue moving, we'll be all right. So I'm gonna kind of manually pilot here and get out of this. Just kind of keep that range button again. Transversal went up for a second while we navigated that obstacle. Keep at range on this guy here. Same thing, we're gonna overheat our afterburner, or our, not our afterburner, our prop mod, or our web of fire. Not our afterburner or prop mod, but our web of fire. Turn off the heat on that web. Looks like we've almost burnt out the other web. So, like, like I've said a few times in this one, using your overheat sparingly in the case of emergency, like the issue that we had on the, on the, the third fighter wave, uh, because we use our overheat sparingly, we had a lot of extra overheat to play with during that time. So that guy's down. We got one more going down. We're going to keep out range here. And do the same thing. We're going to overheat the web there. Grab him. Once he's under 14, we'll turn that off. And he will go down. That's the last one. And I'll show you guys the mission complete screen in just a moment. We can web him a second time as well since we have it. And that's last burner man mantis mission complete all right everybody if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe in down below and i hope to see you guys in the next one make sure to fly fun and enjoy your time in eve online